This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. And it's time again for feedback questions. The first one comes from Brian. Brian says that he's inspired by our series regarding online security. I decided to change all of my online passwords to big, long, complex, random passwords, e.g. QF, capital R, V, question mark, colon, J3, you know, something like that. Also, the password for each site is unique, and I use KeePass to remember them all. But what absolutely floored me was how many sites reject passwords like this. A lot of sites rejected passwords that contain symbols in them. Why these sites prevent the use of symbols is beyond me. But even more shocking were the length restrictions. I decided 20 characters, yeah, long enough, pretty good, but a lot of sites have an arbitrary maximum length of 15 or even 12, heck, even went to a site that allowed a maximum of eight characters. I've ran across that too for a password. It goes on to, and it goes on to mention that it's big name companies as well as small sites that all have these arbitrary maximums and these crazy you know, problems with passwords containing question marks and whatnot. So thank you, Brian. And that brings up a really, really interesting topic about how I've, I've run across banks that have this problem where they're like, nothing more than 12. You know, I don't care anymore. Bank of America, you're on my shit list. 20 characters? <laughs> 20? Anyway. Um, Why which do I only, do this? Here's the thing. When I set up the account, too, they let me type as much as I wanted in the box. Yes, so I put do. like a 50 character password so you in there. just keep on going. Right? Yeah. Right? And you go to log in, you type your 50 character password, and you're like, I'm not a dumbass. I know what I'm doing. And then you realized, wait a do second. Do I really have to? It was on, their on the mobile. question mark? It was, I only found out because on their mobile app, they truncate it. So you start like, oh. you know, you start typing it into your phone and then it stops going. And you're like, oh, they put it at the maximum text width. Right. Yeah. Whereas on the web app, no. See, this anyway. brings to question, why do they do that? Why is okay, there so a symbol problem? You've got programmers and you've got hackers. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, there, sometimes there's not overlap there. And so the programmer gets this requirements document that says, oh, yes, uh, uh, put the passwords in the database and authenticate the users, you know, or whatever. Right. And they're like, and so everybody rolls their own and they're like, well, we can't have the users put quotation marks in there because then that's going to cancel out in our in our database field and then it'll overflow into or allow so them to... So then they just automatically say, oh, okay, no symbols whatsoever. Yeah. Or, they, or they use a function in, you know, PHP or Ruby or whatever their, their programming language of choice is to just you know, reject those characters because their Which database can't scrub it. Which is why you need to hire a hacker. It. Well, it's why <laughs> you should have the password quotation marks semicolon drop tables, all right? It just, like, seriously <laughs> infuriates me because... I agree. On the one hand, I'm all about creating, like, logical, mm -hmm. secure passwords that you can remember that are unique for every site that you don't need to rely on a password manager for, or if you do... Like me. Well, you're using... Which one are you using? Should I say? I guess it doesn't matter because you know <laughs> they they have the keys to everybody's stuff. But like yeah, if you that's use true. a, I don't know. See, I'm I'm There's personally like LastPass, OnePass, KeePass. Yeah. And all of them kind of save. They save your information. Mm -hmm. They say it's all encrypted. But sure, but well, LinkedIn said it was all encrypted. Right. You know, and it was <laughs> it was hashed. Was it salted? I don't know. You know, <laughs> so I don't like the idea of of handing over that kind of data to another corporation to yeah. to manage my password for me. Um, next week, we've got Mike Osmond in the studio, so he's actually hanging out here right now. Mike, what do you use for password management? You're a hacker. GPG. You, you use, so your password GPG. is three characters? <laughs> G -G no. no, it's funny, we, we were just talking. password is GPG. This series is going into GPG, as we've talked about SSH and, and uh, AES and stuff. So you just, what, do you have a text file on your desktop with GP, with like, does GPG encrypted with like all your passwords? VI. Nice. VI. All right. No Emacs. <laughs> anyway, that's wicked. That's one way to do it. I mean, I, I do something similar and I keep it in my Dropbox or I keep it or I keep right, it a true yeah. crypt volume up in my Google Drive. My friend uh, Cecil, I believe he did the same thing with his. Just kept yeah. everything in a true crypt volume. There you go. Yeah. It's just, it's infuriating. And unfortunately, there, it, the industry isn't at a point where it has any sort of badge that says, this is the hashing algorithm and this is how we implement it. You don't know on the outside, and yeah. unfortunately, it's just one of those, when you really think about it, as far as the web's concerned, we are in such infancy of this stuff. The fact that, you know, the Google Authenticator is only like a year old, yeah. <laughs> um, 
in any way. I could go on and on and on about Microsoft Passport and OAuth and stuff, but we'll save it for another time. Um, short answer, yeah, it sucks. But it's very interesting. Yeah. Ben says, I was wondering if you know if it's possible to do Active Directory user password authentication for logging into a Linux SSH server. Example, prompting the user for a username and password, then authenticating these against Active Directory. I've done this before using Sigwin, but it would be nice to achieve the same thing in real Linux. Okay, so to that, uh, as we've talked about with SSH, the four methods of password um, authentic or, or authentication whatsoever is mm -hmm. public key, encryption, right. password, keyboard interactive, and GSS API. Mm -hmm. yeah. That GSS API is typically where some bigger vendors could like sell you something that integrates with some custom thing of yes. yours. It's just pretty much a, a generic sign-on service thing. Um, however, I should point to right here, blog, uh, blog.scottlow.org has an awesome article here where he links to how to do this in Windows Server 2008, ah. Server 2003, as well as Solaris, and then the common firewalls, Cisco, uh, WatchGuard. Um, I've unfortunately had way too much fun with a Firebox, mm -hmm. and um, as well as Open VMware DSC. stuff. And so uh, I've, I've dived into some of the Server 2003 stuff, and uh, what it looks like is it's kind of like a hack using Open LDAP which is a LDAP stands for Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. Okay, it's, it's an open way to do directory access, mm -hmm. whereas Microsoft has a thing called Active Directory, which in, the org in enterprises is like you know, your gold standard. Right. Like yeah. Everyone uses it, unfortunately. And so um, Active Directory speaks LDAP. And so using a PAM module for Kerberos, uh, KRB5, and using uh, NSS LDAP, which is a name server plugin for LDAP, um, there's a way that you can hack together a solution where Active Directory users can log into your Linux thing with SSH with their single sign-on Active okay. Directory goodness. So I'm just going to point you to that blog because it's, it's too enterprise for us to be doing a walkthrough right now. But uh, this is the place. Uh, check it out. And if you guys do this in your organization, uh, let us know. Like I would love to hear what kind of crazy stuff has been hacked together to, to make all of that work. I am famously quoted as, as being a proponent of the, uh, the LDAP group, so, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, he also had a second part to his question. He says, Aussie, you were talking in episode 1116 about using MD5 salted hashes for logging into websites. If your website uses HTTPS, then is it still advisable to implement something like this, or is the security provided by HTTPS enough to just post off the passwords in the clear? Is the security enough? No, security no, is security layers. Security is never enough. Security is never <laughs> enough, and also there are several layers. So HTTPS is your transport layer between, mm -hmm. like, you know, if you're the server and I'm the client, we're right. speaking HTTPS, third party not seeing that. That's right. great. Exactly. You've got a database where you keep your password, mm -hmm. or well, my password on my behalf, and that needs they to be still... hashed and salted and secured. Right. Okay, and and even that server, you know, within the organization needs to be secured. There's so many layers to it, right? Yeah. Like. Do we need it to be, you know, accessible from the Exchange server? And each level, well, I don't each know. level kind of, uh, is, it secures it from a different path. Yes. I want to say. Yes. And so HTTPS, while well, they say on CNN, oh, just use HTTPS and you're secure. Sure, from a man-in-the-middle attack where right. SSL strip isn't being used. Otherwise... So from like the consumer standpoint, HTTPS, that's enough. Well, unfortunately, from the consumer standpoint, you don't know you don't how know they're storing it in your database, mm -hmm. in their database. And that's yeah. why I think that there should be some sort of industry standard badge or some sort of way to say, like, in the privacy policy, hey, bitches, this is how we're going to sell your info to marketing companies yeah. and everything else, right? I mean, everybody has to have a privacy policy. Of course. You know, and comply to COPA and other things. There should be something that says, hey, bro, we use SHA-1. Or, hey, we use SHA-224, <laughs> and it's salty yeah, goodness. I don't know. Uh, hopefully we'll see getting that off one the soapbox day. there. Yes, so if you have questions, of course, email us feedback at hack5.org and in coming up in just a second, is it trivia time? Trivia and the Technolus photo of the week. BRB. 
If you're setting up a website for your new business, showcasing your portfolio, your new blog, domain.com is the best place to go for your next great idea. If you need to register a new domain, consider getting a new .com. You see, a .com is the original. We all know it's the best. It's globally understood. It has immediate credibility no matter what name you choose. Or if you're even into investing in buying and selling domains, .coms have the greatest aftermarket value. Find new .com domains over at domain.com. You know, Shannon and I love them because they're so easy to use, they're affordable, they're reliable. Plus, domain.com, they're so active on social media like Twitter, they're at domain.com, they got great customer support. It's really just a fun place to do business. So the guys over at domain.com want to hook our fans up with an additional offer. Get this, 15% off the already affordable domain names and web hosting if you use the coupon code HACK5, H-A-K-5, at domain.com's checkout. That's 15% percent off and big savings so don't forget to use the coupon code HAK5 when you think domain names think domain.com well, that just about wraps up this episode of hack 5 but first we got to get into our technolist photo of the week so Jeff and Amy sent this picture in from New York. It's apparently this fancy schmancy new Coke machine that they have up there, and uh -huh. it's apparently kind of busted on the boot screen. Oh, Just oh, sitting there. PCI device listing. Hey, <laughs> nice. I love. I've never seen a Coke machine with I, a big fancy schmancy monitor like that before. I love that it's just a uh, sideways LCD. Yeah, and it's, it's got just and it's chilling. and it's just an x86 box. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? That's what most, thing, most things run on. Well, <coughs> hmm. I, I wonder what they use to manage it. I wonder if it's uh, if it's Bluetooth or Zigbee yeah, or stay tuned yeah, next you week. Gotta ah, wonder. All right. uh, get some free soda. I could totally use a soda right now. Ugh, all right, last week. I know, so not good for you, High but fructose. delicious. Yeah. Yeah, it used to be. Oh, dude, it's, you want me to get into to like the Anarchist Cookbook and the Jolly Rogers Cookbook stuff on like uh. getting free sodas back <laughs> in the nineties. Man, oh, good times. We should have an old school episode. <laughs> we anyway. should. I could get a free pizza. Uh, yeah. The Broken, mm, remember, yeah. back in the day? Wow, okay. old school. So last week's trivia question was, if the theoretical data rate of a one times Blu-ray drive is 36 megabits per second, approximately how long will it take for a 2x drive to fill a single layer Blu-ray disc with data? Wow. Now, if that's not a math question, I don't know what is. Mm -hmm. And so if the train is going at, well, here's the thing. <laughs> I just reversed the math and found out that you're talking about 94 uh, gigabytes because it took 35 megabytes per second. Did you say mega megabytes or megabits? Uh, I said megabytes. Right. Okay, because <laughs> megabits would be 11 gigabytes. That makes more sense. Okay, so 11 megabits per second, 11.8 gigabits uh, gigabytes. That's, uh, that's a Blu-ray, right? 45 minutes, 45 I'm minutes. sorry, that's the answer. Yep, 45 yeah. minutes, that is the answer. You got it right. God, I love, Good job. I love the fact that Google can calculate like bits and bytes I know, to dude. minutes and seconds Let and stuff. Let me Google this for you. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. that's totally a Google question. Anyway, this week's trivia question is, using a strobe to illuminate a subject while keeping the background property exposed is a technique known as what? Hmm. Properly exposed, excuse mm. me. This is this is a photography question. This is yes. This is not what I was expecting. Okay. It's still nerd tactic. And I have to. Uh oh, hey, I, I see what you did there. I, yeah. I, I, I like it. I like it. I'll have to like noodle on that one for a bit. If you have the answer, of course, head over to hack5.org/trivia. Make fun of the panda bear over there and let us know what you think. <laughs> And we value your feedback, so you can email us at feedback at hack5.org. You can let us know what you think of the show, what you think about proxy chains, for Or example. what you think about Ewoks and Imperials up on the Force Mood of Endor. Exactly. Dude, Mirror Wars was awesome. Touristy, yeah. but awesome. Don't forget, you can also follow us, hack5.org slash follow. That's where all the social networks and things are happening. And if you like what we are doing and wait, you want to support us directly, we have plenty of awesome, cool hacker gadgets in the store. For example, the Land Tap Pro. Oh, yeah. There. It's the like a throwing star, pineapple. except it won't poke your eye out. We have all sorts of cool new bundles for the Wi Fi Pineapple 4. This is true. Ooh. And they are so sexy. Okay. Well, with all of that said, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Trust your technologist. Hello, welcome up to the da. Sorry, did it wrong. And my name is Shannon Morse. Oh, let's try that again. 
farewell. Auf Wiedersehen, goodbye.